Hello, welcome to this episode of the Black Male Achievement Podcast. This is a uh, podcast where I talk to black males and people working with black males to talk about different things that pertain to black males. So today we have Mr. Jeff Austin. He is the Communication Outreach Coordinator for the Department of Public Health and Wellness for Louisville Metro Government. He's been there for about three months. Uh, so he has a program that I want to talk to him about. I uh, will discuss black fatherhood, myths about it, why his organization is important, and uh, what he has planned for the future, and maybe even a call to action for people of the community and how they can get involved. So, uh, Mr. Austin, thank you for joining me today. And uh, how you doing? I'm great, man. Thank you for having me. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity to share some light on uh, the program that I'm involved with. And um, shout out to JCPS. Uh, my daughter's a JCPS student. I am a JCPS graduate. So. Um, I do I do value the uh, public education school system here, and uh, you guys are doing a great job because my daughter is intelligent. She's smarter than I was at that age, so that's a good thing. So you being a, a JCPS product, I, I want to talk about how you came up because I know you're not from originally from Louisville. Tell us about you right. know where you're from, how you ended up in Louisville, what school you graduated from. So catch us up to your senior year of high school. Absolutely. So um, not a born and raised Louisville resident. Uh, my father uh, lived here. He's a male graduate. Um, God bless his soul. I used to come and visit. I am for, originally from Prince George's County, Maryland, uh, Capitol Heights, Maryland, to be specific, uh, which is the D.C. metropolitan area. So um, in the summers, my mom, she would send me here to spend a little time with my dad. And that, you know, that happened uh, probably as early as the fourth or fifth grade. So in the summers, I would come and visit, spend a little time and then go back home and get ready for school. Um, unfortunately, my senior year, uh, my mom was dealing with some struggles being a single parent. Um, I had a couple siblings at home, a younger brother, younger sister. My senior year, I just felt it was going to be a super challenge for her to uh, be able to provide for me and it was just a, a good opportunity for me to um, not only bond with my father, but to finish my high school career, um, which I thought was a good thing. Uh, I transferred here from uh, Central High School in Capitol Heights, Maryland, to uh, Ballard High School right here in Louisville. Ballard Bruin, shout out. Um, played my senior year there. And after I graduated, uh, went to junior college, and I was chasing the basketball dream, to be very honest with you, like many young men here, um, just going to different colleges and, and just trying to do the best that I could. Um, once my academic advisor at Spalding University made me realize that I was not going to the NBA, uh, education became real important to me, and that just gave me the platform that uh, I'm speaking from today, which is I got involved in social services and community is has always been important to me, which has led me through my professional career to working at uh, Whitney M Job Corps, um, working in social services in, in Philadelphia, which is where I was before I came back to Louisville. So, um, like I said, community is important to me. And whether I'm getting a paycheck or whether I'm doing this job for whatever reason, I always enjoy helping and giving back. So that's how I ended up where I am. So you grew up like a lot of young black men uh, chasing the dream of being uh, in the NBA or being a professional athlete. Uh, what what was the process of you choosing your college? Was it Did you choose the college that you thought was going to help you get to the NBA? Uh, did you consider academics before? Because it seemed like you were all uh, head first into trying to become a professional athlete until you got the uh, rude awakening that that wasn't your future. Uh, what was the process like of like choosing the college that you wanted to attend? Coming, coming out of high school, um, I have an older sister uh, that played at Syracuse University. So watching her uh, receive her accolades and, and doing very well, getting a full scholarship, I knew that I was going to college. I wanted to play college basketball. I had no question or concern like where I was going to go and who I could play for. My philosophy was any school that is, is willing to allow me to come and further not only my education, but uh, give me an opportunity to play, I'm going to take it. So um wasn't strong in academics, I'll be honest with you, coming through high school because I didn't realize the importance of academics on top of basketball. But um, once I kind of realized that that 
NBA window was closing and the line to get into the NBA was like uh, basically hitting the Powerball or the Mega Million jackpot. Um, I had to really get focused. And um, I have a lot of education in my family from my mom being a college graduate, my dad, my stepmom. Uh, everybody has uh, some form of college in their background in my family. Um, I just knew that it is what I wanted to do. So uh, college basketball was definitely just the driving force. But um, once, once, like I said, that window closed, it was like, okay, how am I going to be able to provide for myself and take care of myself? And that's what the college whole college uh, situation came about. And I know a lot of pe- a lot of young black males because uh, I grew up with some that they they put everything they had into sports, and then when they didn't get the opportunity they thought they deserved, it was kind of hard for mm-hmm. them to uh, to make that next step to figure out okay, what's my plan B because that didn't work. So, uh, what kind of advice would you right. have for young? African-American males right now that uh, may, especially in the age of COVID, because a lot of students aren't getting the same opportunities or a lot of athletes aren't getting the same opportunities uh, because they may not be able to play sports and stuff like that. So some of them may be getting their, their rude awakening a little bit earlier. What kind of advice do you have for young men? Because you work with students all the time. What kind of advice do you give mm-hmm. students who say, hey, I want to go to uh, NBA. I want to go to the NFL. What kind of feedback do you normally give those students? I tell them, and I'm I'm very blunt. I tell them, do not stop dreaming. Do not stop dreaming. If you have a dream of being a professional athlete, then definitely uh, aspire to be that. But have a plan B. And even the best, most professional, the strongest, fastest, the best basketball player, football player, baseball player, they all have a plan B because they know that father time is going to limit their uh, their playing time. So. You can be in the league for 20 years, but after that 20th year, you got to have a business plan. So um, my advice to them is always education first, always education first. You have to educate yourself, um, learn how to be responsible, take care of what you need to um, keep dreaming. If you can get to the NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball, that's great. But if not, have something to fall back on and being a regular uh, tax paying just nine to five having a job is really not that bad as long as you have paid your dues and you have some sense of direction as to what you want to do with yourself. So I tell them dream, but um, also make sure that you got those books in order. Right. So I know you went into, like you said, social services and working with students. I met you from working at the Job Corps and you are always the uh, staff member that had like the best relationship with the students. A lot of them looked up to you, had a great relationship with you. Uh, so you poured into a lot of students. Uh, I don't, I know about Job Corps. I don't know much about the organization that you're with now. So tell us the uh, name of the organization and uh, why it's important. Awesome. I am currently uh, working in the Healthy Start Department uh, with the, the Public Health and Wellness through the Louisville Metro Government. Um, my team, which consists of some wonderful women, um, they are nurses. I have resource workers What their, uh, what their position is to, uh, have an impact on the infant mortality rate and the zip codes in the city that have the highest numbers. Unfortunately, that is uh, a lot of our West end zip codes. So what they're doing is they're reaching out to new moms, young moms to teach them the importance of um safe sleeping uh breastfeeding um keeping your appointments immunizations things of that nature and where i come into it uh we are running a program called 502 fathers and we're focused on the dads um often in society dads tend to um you know we definitely celebrate fathers all the time other than you know father father's day but they don't necessarily get the support or the recognition that they should. And this is an opportunity for us to kind of be a support group for dads, but also more importantly, um, we do a daddy boot camp where we kind of give dads tips, helps, um, tips, different help and resources to allow them to thrive and being a good father. So um, again, my program, uh, we're just geared towards reaching out to dad, saying, hey, you're not alone. Um, you know, we understand that co-parenting happens and we try to kind of uh, navigate through that to give the dad the best support. Ultimately, 
uh, to give great support to the child that's involved so that child could thrive. So, um, yeah, that's what we do. 502 Fathers. That's where I'm from. Okay, so uh, that's awesome because, you know, I'm an adult with a, a wife and kids. And the thing I noticed is that there's hundreds, maybe thousands of groups that support mothers and that they always have these uh, opportunities and these uh, outlets where they can convene, where they can talk about motherhood. Like my wife's uh, a twin mom. She has twins. So she, she's in a twin mom group. Uh, she's in a group for black mothers. She's in a group for just for all these different outlets where she can talk to other women about what it takes to be a mother. And they, one, they have the opportunities and the outlets to do it, but two, they're comfortable in giving each other feedback and uh, talking through their feelings about the hard parts. You know, me, I'm a father of twins too. So I, I face some challenges with, um, with, fatherhood and with, you know, feeding the mm -hmm. kids and all that kind of stuff throughout the night. And even if some of that stuff that you were talking about, how to help your baby sleep uh, safely, a lot of people don't realize fathers need to know that information as well, because there's some nights or uh, some times where the mother may not be around. And you have to make sure you're able to hold down the fort while mother is not there. So I think it's a great organization. What age are you guys targeting? Uh, does it matter if they're uh, a 30 year old father or if they're a 16 year old father, what age are you targeting? And uh, tell us a little bit about the father, maybe some fathers, not without saying names, some people that you've actually worked with so far. Okay, so um, we're geared towards, um, this is three months in, I'm still learning, but my philosophy is any father in need is anybody that we would like to serve. Um, our, our primary focus are zip codes 40203, 40208, 40210, 40211, and 40212, which are essentially uh, West End neighborhoods. But um, I'll share my contact information. And we do have 502 Fathers on Facebook, uh, 502 underscore Fathers on Instagram. Any father that reaches out to me in need, um, we try to do our absolute best to serve them. I have a, a wonderful teammate, uh, Mr. Terrell. He's our social worker. So he, um, you know, he meets with the fathers and kind of helps them navigate any uh, situation or issues they may have. Um, we're working with various organizations around the city just to give those dads additional support. So um, the fathers, we try to, you know, young fathers in particular, but again, I'm not turning any dads away. So if I get a 65 year old father that calls me and says, hey, he's having issues or concerns or he needs some additional support. Or for men, one thing that I do know, and, and you can vouch for this, is just having that support that I can get some things off my chest right. and not only get it off my chest, but I can share it with somebody that may be going through a similar situation or somebody that has been through that situation that can kind of help me navigate. So um, again, I'm not turning away any fathers. Um, of course, we're focused on, uh, you know, black fathers in particular, but that's not my main focus. Um, you, you could be purple. You could be of any background, any descent. It doesn't matter. Um, I just don't care. It's like if you have an a, a issue and you're a dad, my job is to empower you or give you the support that is going to allow you to uh, take care of your children. How long is the boot camp that you refer to? Well, we do it uh, right now. We're going to do it uh, bi-monthly. And uh, as COVID, COVID has thrown everything off. We would meet in person and kind of have a little bit of time to um, kind of just unwind, maybe have a light refreshments or something, and then go into certain aspects of certain tips, car seat safety, how to feed your baby, how to burp them. Um, unfortunately, in our society, it really, it really strikes a nerve with me when I hear of a child being um, a baby or a young child being abused or neglected because the father or the boyfriend of the mother was frustrated that the child was crying and wouldn't stop crying or was just being fussy and the, you know, the dad or the uh, paramour didn't understand why the child was being fussy and that turns into frustration. That doesn't work for me. What works for me is if you're having an issue pick up the phone, call for help. If it's an emergency, clearly call 911. But if you're having a day that you're just like, oh, the baby won't stop crying, I don't know what to do, and the mom or um, some female of uh, some support isn't available, then you can say, well, let me call 
uh, 5025 is a let me get on their web page and let me check them out and maybe, you know, maybe we can help out. And I don't have any problem talking to anybody anywhere uh, for the benefit of their child. So is this, uh, if they join this organization or this program, is this something that they can reach out 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Uh, are there hours of operation? How, how, how would you guys be supporting fathers that are in the program? Well, uh, we're going to support fathers. Of course, we're you know a business like everybody else, so we have office hours, but we tend to be flexible, meaning if I have to meet with you later in the evening or early in the day, or if you're working and I can only talk to you on Saturdays, that's your only availability, um, we try to custom fit it to meet their needs. So um, again, if it's an emergency, call 911. But if it's something that's not super urgent, you can text me, you can call me. Um, if I don't respond right away, I respond the next business day. Again, if it's the weekend, if it's not an emergency, I respond first thing Monday. But if it's an emergency, please call your appropriate services and get the help that you, you desperately need. So um, yeah, they can reach out anytime. And then that, you know, with digital with the digital footprint that we have, the Instagram, we're starting to get more uh, momentum there. But our uh, Facebook page, you can drop a message on Facebook page, uh, myself and then my teammate, Mr. Terrell, he's uh, available to support. So um, we just try to meet our clients wherever we can to help them out with whatever they need help with. Okay, so I'm going to uh, get a little bit personal with you. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of men don't like to communicate. That's something that's, it's a stereotype, but the reason I say it's true is because I'm the same way. You know, I struggle Absolutely. with opening up and communicating, especially when we have needs. Uh, you are a black man. You are a father. What are, What would you say, um, if there's just a father out there that's going to listen to this podcast that says, man, it sounds like a great thing, but I'm scared to reach out. I don't know if it's confidential. I don't want to mm -hmm. have to expose myself and be vulnerable to somebody else about the things that I'm actually going to. You being a black father, what what's, what are some uh, tidbits or some kind of advice that you would uh, offer to somebody that's either just found out they're having a child or maybe has a young child, some things that have helped you up until this point. Oh my gosh. I am an old dad. I have no problem telling people. My daughter is in the third grade. She's eight years old. My one and only child. Um, it was overwhelming for me. Um, just the thought of me being responsible for this little person. What I would tell anybody is, is the first thing you're not alone, man. You're not alone. There are guys out here going through exactly what you're going through, similar to what you're going through, or have been through what you've been through. So uh, seek the support and the help that you would need versus internalizing it and keeping it to yourself until it manifests into a bigger problem, whether it's an um, anger issue or whether it's a performance issue at work or whether you're not yourself with your family and your friends and you're always snappy. And I had that situation where I was a little frustrated and I didn't know um, exactly how to go about getting help, but it took a lot out of me to figure out it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to ask for support. Any guy that is listening uh, to this recording and they're like, well, dang, I got kids or I have a kid on the way and I'm overwhelmed. I don't know what to do then you really need to reach out to us and allow us to try to support you. Uh, I am not perfect. Uh, the information I give and the information that I share is information that I have received or I'm learning as I'm going along from different organizations around the country, um, working with different people in the city of Louisville just to get more familiar with some of the needs dads may have and some of the support and resources they could utilize. I just simply tell them to give me a chance. Give me a call. Uh, watch this video. Check out our Facebook page. Uh, I do have a uh, fall kickoff coming up, and that is in uh, on November 17th from 6 to 7 p.m. on Facebook Live, where we'll talk about our program, and I'll give a couple tips. Um, our nurses on my healthy team, they're uh, dealing with some uh, stuff with the ladies, and they have a Facebook Live on November 19th, which is Healthy Babies Louisville. And their topic is pregnancy and infant loss, which we know that uh, women have, um, they deal with a lot just to, you know, produce this wonderful human being, you know, when they're pregnant, they get ready to have this baby. 
It's like it's a whole nother person coming into this world and that could overwhelm you. So getting back to what you were saying is just basically give us a chance. If our program isn't the program for you, then we'll help you find one that will be more suitable for you. But right now it's like, hey, we're all in and I am um, I'm blessed to have this opportunity. And the reason I'm so passionate about it, because I'm a father and I know um, anybody that knows me, I don't play about my daughter. I don't play no games, uh, whether it's schoolwork. Um, I was the mystery reader in kindergarten. I was the Christmas elf. It does not matter to me because it's me being involved and giving her the support that she needs so she can thrive and be a independent individual on her own. Yeah, I commend you uh, for what you're doing because uh, like, like we talked about, even with people my age, but even with the you know high school age students, it's like a lot of people had the attitude that once a teenage girl becomes pregnant, that it's her responsibility to raise the child. And I think we always neglect, often neglect uh, that there are a lot of active fathers, you know, that may uh, either intentionally or by mistake uh, have a teenage pregnancy. Uh, one, I feel like one thing that they may battle is feeling like their life is over because they have a, they have a child now and they can't pursue their dreams. So I think having organizations that can assist with that to make sure that they still are able to chase their dreams and also just uh, you know, recognizing that there are fathers that just want to be present. Uh, you know, like uh, one myth about black fatherhood is that black fathers aren't as engaged as white fathers. And research shows that they are. You know, there is a uh, disparity mm -hmm. in marriage in marriage statistics mm -hmm. between, between black couples and white couples. But black fathers are just as are, are oftentimes even more engaged than white fathers. So I think that uh, this organization is going to do a lot to assist with myths like that and uh, just to make it a safe space for young men to. Uh, be involved with this. So I would love to try to hook you up with some uh, young men in JCPS that uh, may have ha had children that we need to get connected to you. So uh, is there anything else that you just want to share about uh, why your organization is important or anything else you have planned for the future? We got the kickoff coming up November 17th from 6 to 7 p.m. Anybody can participate in that because it'll be virtual. You'll be offering mm -hmm. tips and things of that nature. But is there anything else that you would like to share uh, about your organization? Um, the, you know, myself and my, my partner, Mr. Terrell, we're just getting started. Um, I knew a lot about 502 Fathers, but I didn't know a whole bunch about it. Um, so now it's to the point that it's, it's almost brand new, but it's an opportunity for me to really have an impact. And with everything going on in society and, um, you know, the riots, the, you know, police brutality. I'm not getting in political politics or anything like that. But when I see a, a problem with a young man that's involved in the court system or that's not really on the right path, my number one question always goes back to where is his dad? Where is his father? The importance and the impact that fathers have on a household, on a child, on a relationship, I think it, it really... Um, people don't focus on that. If you can really understand, um, my father wasn't there my entire life, but when we got to an understanding that we got to a point that I was able to get off my chest what I had on my chest, and he was able to express to me what was going on in his life at that time, we were able to make a bond. And because of that bond, my analogy is this. You don't ever want to send your kid out in the wintertime without a coat. Kids that have these fathers that aren't involved, that don't support their kids and don't give them uh, the nurturing and, and the time that they need, you're essentially sending your kid out in the winter in a blizzard with no coat. Now, it's going to be up for the kid to figure out, okay, well, how am I going to get warm? Where am I going to get a coat and things of that nature? But fathers essentially give the kids that foundation that allow them to thrive and to go at the world and say, okay, well, I have somebody that's got my back. So let me go and be fearless in what I do and, and really try to make a name for myself. Uh, my daughter, I can honestly say uh, I'm very happy. One of the things I was proud of uh, being an older father and just watching her grow is she woke up with a smile every day. I had no clue what I was doing. Uh, I must have been doing something right. But you know, whether it was me dropping her off at daycare, me picking her up at daycare, me going to school, picking her up at school, 
It was the smile on her face to let me know that she has some tools or she has what she needs that she's going to be able to be a productive citizen and thrive and always look back and know that she's got her father behind. Yeah, and I think that uh, you talk, you talked about the court system and all that kind of stuff. I think there's a lot of things systemically that um, have worked against the, the father, uh, the, particularly the black father. So I think it's going to take systemic uh, programs like the one you're doing right now to assist with making sure that we support uh, fathers and black fathers to make sure that they have all the tools that they need to make sure that they're there and able to do what they need to do for their family. And to know that, uh, just like you, t you alluded to, we don't... I mean, you can read a book on how to be a father, but every child is different. Every man is different. Uh, it's you. You can't really figure <laughs> figure it out, man. You just got to do your best. And the biggest thing is being present, like you alluded to. Uh, but we, we're doing our best to figure this out. So I think that your organization is important so we can uh, figure it out together uh, and have a support system behind us so that we understand that the things we're going through. We're not going through it alone. So I, I commend you for what you're doing. Absolutely. I appreciate it. We'll make sure that we put a link to the Instagram page uh, in the description of the of the podcast. And uh, again, the kickoff will be November 17th from 6 to 7 p.m. So thank you for joining me today, man. Uh, I really appreciate you. Man, uh, Mr. Van, hey, brother, I appreciate you. You got them beautiful twins, and you have your daughter that looks like she's going to be a news reporter, so that's awesome. <laughs> um, it just, just please, anybody that hears this, know that you have support. And even if you don't like our program, there are other programs in the city that are geared towards fathers. My plea is, is to these dads, we need you. I don't care if you're African-American. I don't care if you're Latino. I don't care what your background is. If you have kids, they depend on you. My voice is their voice because they aren't articulate enough to say, Daddy, I need you to be there. Daddy, this is what I'm lacking. Daddy, I'm upset about this. It's like, hey, you got support. Um, a wise man told me this, and it has struck chords in me, and I still hear it to this day. I uh, lost my father in 2008, so that was a blow in itself, but he left me with enough information, enough knowledge, and enough quotes that I hang on those very words to this day. And going back to what this wise man told me, he said um, he had divorced and, and maybe had multiple wives, but he had a couple kids. He said if he would have known that his kids would have turned out better, his kids weren't bad by no means, let me make that clear. But he said if he would have known, his kids would have turned out much better if he would have stayed with his wife, his first wife. He said he would have did it just for that. So that in itself, uh, my wife is probably going to hear this. She can't go nowhere because I ain't going nowhere because we got business to do. And my eight-year-old daughter needs us. So uh, I'm in it for the long run. So it is what it is. <laughs> I heard that. Well, we're going to get off of here before you uh, get in trouble, man. Say the wrong thing if your wife in the background listening. So I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you. And we'll um, make sure we support you on November 17th from 6 to 7 at the kickoff, man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. God bless JCPSA. Do what y'all do, man. <laughs>